Hello and welcome to the video. This is an update to a video that I did a little while ago with Ben, specifically about how you can set up the auto launch features in things like Arduino Pilot. Now, for those who've watched my channel a lot, you'll know that I am a massive fan of the auto launch stuff that's in iNav and I use it all the time. It means that I can just throw the plane and be confident that even if it's a slightly bad throw, that the plane will automatically correct itself and rise gracefully into the sky, meaning that I don't have as many accidents on throws that I used to before I started using it. Now, Ardu Plane has had the same thing for quite a long time. Back when we did that video, it was all about setting up a specific part of a mission, and then you initiated that mission. It was part of um, something called takeoff, and you'd set your height that you wanted to get to, your minimum pitch angle that you wanted to take off at, and it worked really well. However, in Ardu Pilot 4.0, there has been a new thing added and I haven't talked about it yet. So now there's two different ways that you can set up the automated launch. And in the recent video that I did talking about the Hyohan Firefly, I set this up. So let me show you how I set it up here in order to be able to do that kind of shake to wake, easy launches that work every time. So as I mentioned in the introduction, there is now two ways as of Ardu Pilot 4.0 that you can set up an automated launch. And the way I set it up is that kind of shake to wake stuff that I talked about in the introduction. Now the older way, which is the way that I've shown in other videos, is what you do is you create a mission, doesn't matter where, but what you do is you just right click and you say that I want to insert takeoff, it'll ask you two things. One will be the takeoff altitude. So that's the altitude it's got to reach. This is in meters. So you're going to set a number that works for you. And then you're going to enter your takeoff pitch or the pitch of the aircraft. 10 to 15 degrees is going to be fine for most models. So choose one of those. That is all you need in here. And then if you set one of your modes to auto and then you arm, put the model into auto and then shake it, then it's kind of going to work. However, there is a slightly cuter way to do it now. If we go into setup, go into mandatory hardware and set up flight modes, one of the flight modes that's available now is called takeoff. And this is one of the things that was added in Ardu Plane 4.0 and later. So if you're running a relatively modern version, you can just set it as a flight mode. You can make sure you're in takeoff and then that is the mode that you're going to throw it in and then as soon as you're ready to take over you flick it out of takeoff into flyby wire a or whatever it is you're using for a plane and then it's going to come out of that and you're going to be able to fly it around however there potentially is another cute way to do it as well so if we go into configuration if we go down to user params you can set up an individual switch like say for example RC10, you can set it to do very specific things in here, one of which is takeoff mode. So this is the way that I would probably set it up. I would just configure one of the input channels, maybe for a switch that I use for takeoff, and then just have that there for the takeoff piece and then turn that off rather than sacrifice one of my regular modes for flying. So there are a couple of things that you need to think about for this. All of this stuff that we're talking about here is covered on this page here at the top. I'll put a link down below about how all this works, but we're really interested in TK off THR. So let me just very quickly go through that. So if we go down to the full param list, get that from the flight controller, what we need to do is we need to search for takeoff underscore throttle. And here are the different things. So we need the accelerometer count. That is the one that you would use if you want to shake it several times in order to wake it up. I don't tend to do that. Throttle delay can be very handy. Uh, be aware these are tenths of a second. So that's two tenths of a second. This is how long there is a delay between the throw being detected and the motor starting. Obviously, if it is a pusher where the prop is behind your hand, you might want a little bit more than this. I would say that this is probably about right. Takeoff throttle max. If it's at zero, it's going to use the automatic setting that you've already got set. However, we can set it for whatever you want. Um, if you have something that has a high torque, maybe you only want 
Minimum acceleration. Now this is one of those things that you tend to have to play with. I, for hand launching, have this either four or five. That is enough so that when you shake it in your hand, it is going to activate the throttle. Be really careful with that. Having it too low means that any small movement of the plane can initiate the motor spool up. Take off throttle at minimum speed. Don't worry about that for the moment. Take off throttle slew is the other one. So if I set this for 50, then it's going to increase the throttle 50% a second. So it's going to take two seconds in order to get to the takeoff throttle. If I set it for something like 20, then it's going to take five seconds. I normally, for a thrower, normally use either kind of 30, 40 or 50, and then that is the default settings. Don't forget to write your params, read them back to make sure you're set, but that's how I would set it for a standard hand launch where I'm going to use kind of the shake to wake. So how does that work in the field? Well, once it's got a 3D lock and I'm ready, what I'm going to do, I'm going to arm the model, I'm going to put it into takeoff mode, and then I'm going to jerk the plane just that one single time, and it's gonna detect that acceleration and start to run the motor. That motor is gonna take a couple of seconds to get up to full speed. That means I can make sure I have a good hold of it before the throttle is at the maximum. And then when it's at the maximum, I can just throw it and it's going to rise into the air. So there you have it, that's how I would set it up, rather than set it up as part of a mission and then have to have an auto as one of my flight modes to fly that mission. I don't do that anymore. All I do is I would either just select it as a flight mode using one of the standard ways, or I'd add it to an additional switch. So I've got that, which is just there to help me launch it on those days where there is a bit of headwind. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.